What day are we on, Jerry? We are on day 48 okay. of New York State held hostage by the Bail Reform Act. Right, so inside Blue 360 today, we're going to once again discuss the uh, the Bail Reform Act and how it's it's taking hold. It's making a lot of... Uh, a lot of, uh, making a lot of news, thank God. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's like the gift that keeps on giving for That's us right. uh, on this podcast here. Uh, it's interesting because uh, we're seeing up in Albany the governor and some moderate Democrats uh, who are going to be suffering a little bit come uh, election time. Oh, yeah. Are trying to push for a uh, an amendment to the law. Uh, maybe giving judges the uh, right to consider uh, a possibility that the perpetrator will reoffend, or he'll abscond, mm-hmm. or he'll be a danger to society. So, uh, they're working. There's, there's talks about uh, certain senators are meeting in secret, and then of course now you have other politicians are uh, uh, very, very uh, vocally mm-hmm. saying, "No, there's not going to be any retreat." Uh, this is here to stay. Right. And it looks like the Assembly, uh, which is the lower house in New York State, for those that don't know, uh, is going to hold firm uh, to bail reform. And the Senate, uh, which I guess they think they're in a more vulnerable position because mm-hmm. the Democrats just took control of the Senate in the last election mm-hmm. cycle, uh, are considering uh, reforming the act. Uh, who knows what will happen? Uh, I don't know. Uh uh, you know, is it reform? Is it deform? I don't you know, know. Who knows? It didn't. It didn't work out it's well. Not, it's not working out too well. I think there's a few people. I personally, if I was a cop, I would love it because I'd just be making more overtime. <laughs> you know. You know. In and out. In and out. In and out. The revolving doors of justice. Right. Uh, and it's okay. You know, it, it, <laughs> that is a, a way to look at it, right? If you're a police officer who's uh, who uh, loves the action and is looking to go find bad guys to arrest mm-hmm. and uh, make some overtime and you know possibly avoid having to have a second job, right? Yeah, it's a good deal. But uh, uh, you know, if you're if you're a, a live here in New York State like you and right, I do, right? And you're part of the solution, not part of the problem. Right, yeah. Uh, people are like, you know, this, this isn't making any sense. Right, and realistically, you can't lock them up fast enough because there's not enough police officers to do that. Right. You'll have, a, like, a skeleton crew. And, you know, a, 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 another part of this, and I think it's a little odd for you and I to talk about this because we're both white, but there's a, a big racial... <laughs> well, maybe you don't identify as white, but uh, you are white. I got to take that uh, 33 and me. What uh, is it, 23 or 23 30? 23 and me. <laughs> I'm not taking it. <laughs> Just to digress a minute, you're a woman. You can you can take that. I'm a guy. There's no guys don't should not no guys yeah, should be taking that. that test. So uh, 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 there's a big line being drawn uh, by minority lawmakers who are saying that uh, the old bail system uh, incarcerated black and brown people at a uh, uh, an untenable rate and it was ruining uh, those societies. Mm-hmm. But I, I think what's being lost in this whole conversation, right. and you were a Bronx cop for your whole career, so you mm-hmm. probably have a better take on this than me. I worked in Midtown, which was a commuter population. Yeah. Is that the the populations who get victimized by crime in this city, yeah. by and large, are black and brown populations. Right. It's just, you know, and the thing of it is, is like any police commissioner or any, you, you look back in the history of like all this uh, crime fighting statistics, you see that... Um, Officers are deployed to high crime areas. They're not put in areas that there's no crime because it would be useless. You know, I mean, of course, there's those precincts in Queens that have to have police there, but, you know, we'll let that be unsaid. But the thing is, you can't be, when once you start putting more police, like it, I remember it was uh, Operation Take Back or Safe Streets, whatever it was. The more police you put out there, the more arrests you're going to make anyway because you're more visible. The complaints are going to go up because now there's a cop that's on the corner and stuff. So, I mean, it, 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 I understand what they're trying to say, but in, 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 it's that community that asks for right. the police to come there when they go to the community board meetings. When you go to, and you, if you live in a housing development, if you go to the uh, community center when they have their meetings. I mean, I worked in the Bronx. Those meetings were pretty, you know, they everybody went. So right. this, there are more people that are affected negatively by it than positively, right. without a doubt. Perpetrators on the street reoffending. Oh, yeah. And even if they're just doing uh, nonsense stuff, like car break-ins and... Yeah, but, you know, when you break into my fishing, car, I, I that's know. annoying. Because I don't care about the mailbox fishing. <laughs> because, quite honestly, it, you, you know what? You can take anything. You, you could steal my credit. That's fine. Because American <laughs> Express wouldn't be surprised. The mailbox fishing doesn't affect me, but the car breaking would affect me. 
I'm yeah. going to talk about what affects Michelle today. And yeah, another thing is the squeegee guys. I saw Remember that. Remember those squeegee guys? I saw that. Oh my lord. <laughs> the uh, uh, I couldn't believe the squeegee guys were back. Uh, they were a huge, huge problem in the city. And not that uh, uh, squeegee men were out there uh, raping and murdering no, and pillaging. they were annoying, though. It was just a symbol that back in the 80s, uh, or I guess into the early 90s, in, yeah. that the city was unmanageable, ungovernable, yeah. unlivable, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, the squeegee guys. And they used to use the newspaper to wipe your... Right. I remember you that. know, when... when <laughs> Wipe your, wipe your windshield. Dude, no. I don't have change of a 20, and I'm not paying. I can't help. Right. You know, I used to feel bad in a way. So, you know, uh, you know they uh, they get you. you know, yeah. And for, those, for those that uh, didn't live through it, you're either young or you didn't live in New York City or travel in New York City back in, back in the day, as we would say. Uh, squeegee men would work at like a, a highway off-ramp or at an intersection where traffic would always back up. And they would uh, come and get you. You're frozen. You can't move your car because you're blocked in by other traffic. <laughs> they'd squirt soap <laughs> on your car. Uh, they they do some kind of half-ass cleaning of your windshield, and then they would demand money. And if you didn't pay them, uh, not all the time, but they might take your windshield wiper and break it off. They might take your car yeah. and break it off. Yeah. And now you're like, you know, you got a hundred dollar repair you got to do to your car because you didn't give the guy a buck. Uh, and it's 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 a shakedown. It's a total yeah, it's a, shakedown. Yeah, it's a, like extortion. And the police department didn't do anything about it. Mm -mm. Cops would drive, drive past squeegee men because they had bigger fish to fry. They had guys with guns to catch and robbers to get and burglars to get. Big time drug dealer, uh, drug gangs would have whole corners. Cops right. would be going chasing the drug dealers. Squeegee men were like They're way, low. way, way down on the uh, on uh, the priority. They were like the fruit list. guys, right. the guys that sell the fruit off the Brugner. Right. I like those guys. They so, have good fruit. All right. Yeah. Uh, so no, so it was a a, a change was made in right. New York City to go after quality of life, mm -hmm. and and it kind of uh, uh, turned the tide. Right. It turned the tide, and no one wants to. You know, no one wants to be a bad guy no. and lock up quality of life people, right? Because mm -mm. it's mm -mm. like it's like you know. Like oh you could oh you couldn't go get a someone with a gun right you had to go get get the poor right, squeegee guy right. yeah. but the squeegee guy is is a real visible and tangible part of the, the problem and if you have squeegee guys out there yeah uh, they block traffic it's it's annoying right. and not everybody you know I don't want that that on my windshield that's bad enough I have to I'm too lazy to go to the car wash. <laughs> and I have to keep filling up my fluid. I don't want this guy. I know what you're saying. Right. It is annoying. And Get away from my car, buddy. And, and listen, and you're not afraid. But there are people that would be afraid. Of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, of yeah. course. You can't, you can uh, you know, whatever. My car gets messed up as it is. Yeah. Well, they, listen, they didn't always do a good job. Some guys would do a good Some job. Some guys did but, do a good job. But some uh, of the guys, you know, it's true. It's a shakedown and everything. It's a shakedown. Big shakedown. And, and people get nervous. They get yep. scared. They don't want to come to the city. No. Then. They don't want to spend their money. Uh, there's a whole host of things that happen uh, that are bad, uh, and this is just part of the uh, uh, part of the uh, the stepping back from aggressive enforcement that is is taking place. Where the decarceration mm -hmm. of, of inmates it sends a signal to the officers on patrol, right? Nobody cares. That they shouldn't be involved. Yeah. Right? Nobody cares, right? Mm -hmm. And so. The criminal element, and I don't, I don't listen. I don't want to call the guys squeegee guys criminal element. They, those are guys that commit a crime because they're taking advantage. They're not like John Dillinger. Right, Dillinger. right. Uh, they see it. They're not dopey people. No, just because no. they they are they're living on the edge of society doesn't mean they're stupid. Yeah, and they they see what's going on. Right, they can right. see that the police is stepping back. Yeah, so they're gonna fill that void. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, oh no, cops gonna chase me anymore. Yeah. no cops gonna put handcuffs me on, on on me anymore. I'll just do whatever the hell I want. They're clients now, by the way. They're called clients. I know they're called clients. They're not perpetrators or perps. They're clients or suspects or defendants. They're clients. Right. We have clients yeah. now. I uh, yes. So uh, I unfortunately. Broken windows uh, is been retreated from. Yeah, and uh, again too with the broken windows, it's always at the it, half of them were violations. So it wasn't like, you know, it, it was the most. It happened in, in your presence or whatever. That's one thing. But a lot of these these things. I remember one time somebody shot up a bunch of cars like up by City Island. You know, some of the local kids that lived in the, off City Island or whatever. You know, and. and uh, they shot up quite a few of them, and it was it was a, a big pain in the neck, you know. 
But I mean, with these small, with these, um, the broken windows policies, you know, you have the discretion of, of giving them a summons or whatever. Right. You can also just stop and say, hey, listen, I caught you doing it. Don't do it again. Give them a slap on the wrist. There's ways of handling it, you know, because they are low priority. Right. You, but you can't simply just drive away or pretend you don't see it, you know, um, with the uh, with the intention of, you know... Right. Uh, like I'm, I'm too, I can't. I'm not going to be bothered with it. You can't make it that obvious. Right. You have to stop and, and do something. And again, the you know these policies were in effect for the smaller crimes, so it doesn't manifest into the big things. When you start to like, you know, mess around with people's property, they get a little bit pissed off, and then the next thing you know, right. I'm going to do this. Yep. You know. And the other cascading effect is when uh, criminals that will do. Things that may be a little more violent. Of course, or they a little test more the waters. They see that the cops are ignoring that. Yeah. And they're like, okay, maybe they'll ignore me of when course. I'm walking down the street in the middle of the night or in somebody's alley or something like that. You know, it's it's the the criminal element uh, are always looking to 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 to, to test take the waters, test yeah. the water, see what they can exploit. Uh, for uh, sports fans, it's like a football game. They're looking to see who's weak, mm-hmm. who, you know, who can be exploited. Can you run through this hole? Can you can you exploit yeah. that D back on a pass route? Uh, it's the same thing. If they see that there's some way to exploit the system, yep, they're gonna exploit it. Uh, there was a guy arrested in the subway system uh, last week, and I can't remember his name. It's like uh, you know, I'm not gonna say because I'll get it wrong and I'll get someone will sue us. Uh, uh, he said that he. I like uh, how wait. I like how most podcasts the producers go to Google, but our, our uh, guy right. guy's going old school, right, right back to the archives. Uh, 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 He's going back of, to the archives. One of our producers is scouring an actual newspaper. A newspaper. If you don't know what that is, that gets name. the ink on your fingers. Yes, hold it, hold it. Breaking news now from Tokyo. Uh, the I war the, is over. I hear the teletype <laughs> coming across now. Oh wait, he's got the other. He's got yesterday's so, paper too. So it, uh, <laughs> this is great. So Charles Barry was the perpetrator. Another producer used Google. He used Google. Yes, the 21st Technology century. is oh, a phenomenal used, thing. Use an unnamed uh, search engine. Search engine. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, uh, Charles it. Barry's been arrested like 117 times. Uh, he actually proclaimed as he was getting out of court that he that he said bail reform is lit. That's oh, exactly yeah, what lit. he said. Lit. Yeah, we'd be lit, like, yo. He was like pumping his fists in the yeah. air, and reporters are taking pictures of him. Yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. So this is like a, a, a criminal. Uh, he's like a, a, a pettit larcenist. Yeah, and he's, yeah, a a sexual, he's a sexual offender. He's get, and he's doing anything he can on a crowded subway to either get his rocks off or yeah, steal yeah, somebody's yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Get a little something, something. And he, he is fully aware, fully aware, that he is not going to spend any more time in court than oh, absolutely of course, necessary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's going to walk and see the judge, mm-hmm. and he's going to be released. Yep. So it's crazy stuff. So uh, that brings me to uh, my little note here. In Brooklyn, we have a hero. Mm. Oh, yeah, this guy's cool. Yes, Judge John Hecht. Judges are cool. Brooklyn Supreme Court. And he must have sat down with a bunch of law books and done a, done a lot of homework. Because he found a 1981 law that said that you could remand a Berg II defendant for 90 days. It's in the statute. That's amazing. The statute was not rescinded in the Bail Reform Act. It, it you when they usually when one law supplants another. Right, I'm, right. I'm, not, I'm no lawyer, and uh, uh, we are going to be having a lawyer soon. But we'll we'll, uh, we'll talk about this yeah. with him. But when lo- one law is supplants another. It is spelled out in the law that this right. replaces that act, that act, that act, that act, right? It just spells it out. It wasn't spelled out. So he said, well, if this law is still in effect, right. I'm good to go. And he took a recidivist burglary offender. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever been burglarized, if you've ever had your house broken into, your businessman, you've had your business broken into, uh, it's no joke. It, it, it disrupts your life mm. considerably. And it makes you feel vulnerable. And, and it makes people feel afraid. He put this guy in for 90 days. And career burglars, they that's what they do. They do burglary. Right, that's their job. Yeah. You know, that's their job. You know, if you're out there, you work in an office, or you work in a store, or you work in a car repair shop, you go to work every day. That's, that's what right. you do. Right. Well, these guys ain't breaking houses every day. And if they're not right. breaking into places, they're looking for places right. to break it Right, they in. do their homework. Right. And so by, by remanding this guy for 90 days, yeah. 
there are untold number of victims who aren't going to be victimized. Right. And uh, uh, I give I give this judge a lot of credit, and he's uh, finding a legal way to kind of push back on on bail reform uh, in a in a way that uh, is scholarly. Right. He right. has the uh, gravitas as a judge to mm-hmm. do it. It's a little different than you and me railing right. against like, bail oh, reform. Oh, I found this. We're two retired cops. Right. Some people care about what we say. Some people don't care about what we Mm -hmm. say. This guy's a judge, a Supreme Court judge in in Kings County. And uh, hopefully it will will, uh, cause some people to reflect on this, and and maybe we'll see some action from some uh, grown-ups. And it would be nice if other judges took that little, you know, instead of just uh, floated with the rest of the tide. You know what I mean? Well, like cops, some judges have guts. Yeah, so do your homework. But yeah. you think like a judge would be like, oh, well, you know. I mean, we know from police work, not every cop is the first, first person through the door, right? Right, yeah, you know? yeah. Some like you. to come through the door fifth and uh, mm. and then tell the story in a bar how they were at the big seat. Yeah, yeah, so, I changed bail reform. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it, maybe a lot of judges feel like judge checked. Yeah. But they don't have the, uh, they just don't have the. The, uh, the balls to do it? Thank, you could thank say you. that. You said fuck a few times. I'm sure we could say balls. <laughs> Can we say balls? I'm trying to be a better they, person. They edit the bad words out, right? Michelle, I'm a work in progress. I'm trying to, oh, every second of every minute, I'm trying to be a better no, person. No, I'm just being honest. They say fuck on HBO now, too. And they say shit on TNT. Just saying. Do they really? Yeah. Not doing tennis matches or basketball. Either. Well, no. <laughs> you say other things. So, I did want to bring up that. Uh, I thought of a good joke, but I'm not going to even say it. The I'll re- tell it to you later, though. It's funny. Say it. No. Come on. I, no. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for audiences. Wow. It's a basketball joke. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's it. All right. <laughs> we're, we're being cheated out by my uh, being professional out. comic partner here who is holding back mm-hmm. from our audience. You Sometimes know, you, have, you have to. You have to give to the audience. You can't hold back. Sometimes you got to. Listen. They're teased. These are teases. Like when the weatherman goes, I'm going to tell you all about it tomorrow, you know, in five minutes. Like, dude, I need to know now. <laughs> I don't have five <laughs> minutes to waste. Well, you know, uh, there's always Google for the weather or the daily news. No, no. <laughs> Listen, hey, Bronx, I'm going to let you talk about, about this. About AOC? AOC, baby. Um, yeah, she doesn't think we should change the bail law yet. You know what? Hey, OC, she's all right. Uh, she's a little radical. That's okay, though. Um, I think maybe she's just like my... She, sometimes I think that maybe uh, when we read things, we don't read through it. And again, like the news might be saying one side. I'm not giving her credit. I'm just saying that these things happen. Um, but um, I think we really need to... Uh, she needs. We all need to really have a little word with her because you have to... Uh, it's you know I understand not rushing into making changes, right? But we got to do something. So so she she said that we shouldn't rush to change the law because I right. think it's not working out six weeks into it, right? But uh, uh, yeah, she didn't she didn't wasn't part of making the law. No no uh, no. And uh, she doesn't understand that the law was rushed into. Right. Of uh, you know. Uh, this law, there were no hearings in the assembly chamber. Right. There were no hearings in the Senate chamber. They didn't call expert witnesses. It was put into the Budget Act almost about a year ago now. Right. It was act, in, enacted. And uh, uh, it was put into a, a, a budget bill. It was part of like a pork allocation. Yeah. Uh, oh, this, this county's going to get a park. This yeah. county's going to get a new highway overpass. Right, right. Oh, we're going to have bail reform. It's like... It's like, a, it's like a crazy way to, to enact yeah. laws that we do things in the no. state. But it's not that it was just done for bail reform. It's done this way in the state right. for, for decades. Right. I, I don't know why we do things like this in, in New York. It doesn't seem to make any sense. No. Uh, but that's the way it is. Right. But see, the good thing is that, you know, anybody that disagrees with us, this is why you guys, everybody out there, you have to be a little bit educated, you know? So... If you don't agree with her, that's that's great. But so read about why you don't agree with her. Don't just not agree with her because you heard that she's a crazy liberal who just happens to be... She's a nice-looking woman. I know you're going to edit that out. No, now we're not. My wife is going to be it's watching the show. So they'll be no, she's a very smart... She went to BU. Good intelligent, school. Intelligent, yeah. good-looking woman. 
And it's hard in an industry like politics when it's male dominated to be. I think when she was in high school, she was like a Westinghouse finalist, which is not a joke. That's she's like an a smart, thing she's to a do. smart woman. And the thing is that people look and they go, oh, radical, you know. But it doesn't matter if she is or she isn't. It's good that everybody, you got to start this this stir, this, this, um, this like storm a little bit. Yeah. To get people to know what's going on, to get outraged about it. Listen, I, 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 and I get what she's saying. Yeah. The, the, law, uh, the law. It needs to so, be tweaked. So for. Uh, I, I know I just said that the law was uh, voted on about a year ago, but it didn't come into effect until January 1st. Uh, was it voted on? Well, it was, it was part of the bail, uh, not the bail, the budget the budget uh, resolution. So it's it's jammed into the state budget, which has, which has to be enacted by March 31st uh, so that it can, the fiscal year in New York State, I think, starts on July 1st. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, so... They throw all kinds of things into the into the into right. the budget act. Alexandria or o- Ocasio Cortez, Cortez, a very smart, educated woman, yes. nice looking too. I'll throw that in there. Yeah, I'm not going to agree or disagree right. because but Mrs. She, Kane might be watching. This right, podcast. and you know, but the thing is, she's she so she's going to be a little bit more. Um, I think what happens is sometimes people who. They don't feel that they're getting the attention they need, so they have to be. They have to create a little bit more of a stir. You know, so, so yeah, and, and don't I'll, make changes, and everybody's like, "What?" And then they go, "Okay." So hopefully, that's you know, uh, uh, that's probably what she means. So I, I think she would have had a little more uh, validity to her mm-hmm. uh, opinion about uh, this is if she had weighed in. I know they weren't in her district; it was just outside her district boundary, but it did occur in the Bronx. Two cops were shot last week in the Bronx. And I didn't see a tweet from her. I didn't hear a statement from her. And it would be nice if she had just said, hey, even something speedy recovery, mm-hmm. you know, best wishes, you know, the old uh, thoughts and prayers, but instead we got crickets from her, right? So, uh, uh, but then bail reform, which, by the way, is a state issue. She's a federal legislator. Mm-hmm. She doesn't, uh, this isn't a federal issue. Uh, but she weighs in. I, you know, listen, it's a political thing. I guess she's activating her base. Yeah, that's. And her I, I base mean, is is definitely not even center left. It's no, left. left yeah, right? it's really so, o- it's really over there. Uh, I mean, she won the Democratic primary. That's how she ended up getting into Congress because she went from a, a center left guy, yeah. rally. She went left, 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 and then she beat him in the primary. Right. And that was it. She she walked into the, the into Congress. That's right. So. She took him by storm. So I, uh, you know, if she had, if she had shown a little sympathy for our, uh, that lieutenant, and that police officer uh, who almost got killed last week, I think a lot of cops would uh, would uh, have oh, a little absolutely. more, yeah, a little more uh, would be willing to listen to her about this. Right, but it is what it is. Uh, I don't know if we since uh, last week's episode uh, we talked about our, our two police officers were shot in the Bronx. They've both been released from the hospital by yeah. the way since then. Uh, and they're, they're home probably recovering. back to work. The district surgeon probably sent them back to work already. I think you alluded to this last week. I did. You must have had a really crappy district surgeon. I had surgeon. the worst district surgeon for, for 90% of my career. And then I had um, a good one when I was leaving the job. Okay. He was a cool guy. All right. I actually had surgery, and I called up on the Monday, and I said, hey, it's Michelle. And they go, it was 7 o'clock in the morning, and the sick desk goes, why are you calling us? You just had neck surgery. And I go, because they told me to call first thing Monday morning. And she's like, no, you don't have to call. Like, me, that's how scared I was. Nice. Because my stupid district surgeon. Nice. Hated that guy. So, uh, the other part of bail reform. Bail reform. Back to bail reform. No more district surgeons. No, is is the discovery law. Oh, yeah. So, discovery law, we'll go for the, here's like a 30-second law class for our listeners out there. Uh, discovery is evidence, it's either testimonial, it's physical, it's uh, documents, it's electronic documents now in, the, in uh, 2020. And uh, it used to be that it had to be produced by the prosecution uh, uh, before trial. And usually it was, it was disclosed like around 15 days before a trial mm-hmm. started. So it certainly put defense on, uh, on, on their heels. So the defense community really, really lobbied hard up in Albany. And part of the Bail Reform Act is now that all discovery has to be given within 15 days, including uh, victim and witness uh, biographical information, Mm. which definitely can put people at risk. There's two things happening here, which is just unbelievable. 
One is our district attorney's offices across the state are being overwhelmed with discovery uh, evidence that has to be cataloged and reproduced and provided to defense, defense within 15 days of arraignment. And uh, information about witnesses and victims is being given to the defense that would uh, sometimes never, ever uh, be given. Mm -hmm. uh, it led to the death of a witness uh, from a shooting that took place uh, earlier in 2019 uh, on Long Island. And it involved the gang MS-13. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Nassau County District Attorney's Office, knowing that uh, they had to meet the requirements of the Bail Reform Act, disclosed the witness's information to the gang. The gang went and beat the guy to death. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but can I just... I'm just going to correct you right there. In that case, the judge is allowed to step in and say, no, you don't do that. And in that case, the, na the DA didn't do that. The judge was, is allowed by law to go in and step in and say, no, 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 we cover the witnesses. Right. And the judge didn't do it. The judge in Nassau County was in the papers. The judge in Nassau County didn't do it. You, the, you might want to, because that's why I didn't want to talk about this. They, they, basically, the guy did get killed, but he was going to get killed anyway because everybody knew he was an informant. It, it, they already right. knew about it beforehand. But in, in Nassau, they say... I did not know that. Right, because they made a whole big thing about it, like, well, you know, the guy got killed from MS-13 because they gave out his info, but a judge is allowed to stop that. So that's part of So the judge can, can seal... To protect an inf the can, witness's can information. Seal. But okay. the thing is, a lot of these, like what we just discussed before, a lot of judges don't care. They're just going through the process. Right. Bail reform, bail reform. You know, I hate to say it, a lot of times, witnesses, you know what? You know that stuff's going to happen. You know you, that stuff is going to happen. And I'm not talking about a witness like, oh, I saw this. I'm talking about a really high-profile crime. Like, we've had witnesses that we had to relocate in narcotics when I worked with the major case team, things like that. You know, it's a big deal, and we don't take it lightly. So that's why that's made for that. That's why a judge is going to say, you know, we're not going to whack this guy. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, the... Uh I just crushed that bubble. Sorry, no, guys. No, no, listen. So, listen, we're trying to be fair and honest. No, I'm just saying. Oh, no, that's saying, somebody else's tagline, I, isn't it? I don't know. No, but I mean, the thing <laughs> of it is, is that it, you yeah. want to see both points. And that's what some of the, so that's what, you know, was brought out at one point, that the judge can say, and the judge does have that power. They have the power, just like the judge in Brooklyn, to look through anything that they can. Now, you know, MS-13, that's a big thing out on Long Island. I mean, you know, I, I worked uh, out in Suffolk County where it was, uh, you know, you saw it all the time in the mall out there and everything. It's a big thing. It is a big problem, you know. Um, and it's the kind of thing that any witness, that, I mean, I get, it's like a Colombian drug dealer. Their families, are getting, you know, that's what right. they'll do. They just, they just retaliate. They don't care. They killed two um, young girls out in Suffolk County because they mistakenly thought that they were MS-13 or something. Wow. Two young girls, two thir a 13 and walking home from like Bayshore High School or something, and they killed them because they thought that they were, something was up, and they were two totally, and that's how all this stuff started. Because nobody cares about, you know, oh, look, it's just another guy killed out, of, you know, young, a young Spanish guy killed in the woods, Jeez. you know, and, and peop it's behind people's neighborhoods, you know, it's, it's dumped behind the uh, bodies in Massapequa. Um, you know, by the preserve there or whatever. So it's a lot of, you know, it, it, all these things affect the quality of life. Back to go back full circle. Yeah, yes, right. Obviously. Ironically, I went running and I smelt something really foul. I'm on the I'm on the bike path and I'm running in Beth Page and I'm running. Some oh, I know what that smell is and I figured ah somebody probably buried their dog. And like the next day I go running there's the crime scene tape. <laughs> Yeah, it was the body. It wasn't MS-13. Some some lady buried her husband back there. Some uh, uptight housewife in Massapequa. So is this you sticking up for all the women trying to conceal a homicide? I'm trying to conceal a homicide, but I'm like, you know what? You can't leave a woman to bury a body because she didn't even bury it deep enough. That's coming from a woman. <laughs> well, as someone who's uh, investigated a crime scene where a woman committed the crime, they clean up crime scenes pretty well. I'll yeah, tell you that. they do. That's true. Yeah, you, you would know that. <laughs> Yeah. They, men just go like this. They do a quick they wipe down. They smear the blood all around. They're women, like the, the squeegee men. Women actually clean it up. Right. We're like the car wash. <laughs> we do nice. We buff it. We buff. Uh, all right. We, 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 get, we, get, we got the signal here to wrap it up. So uh, 
Uh, bail reform is uh, is. It's a bad issue, guys. Is, we got it. We got to. It's in fix motion. It. Yes. Uh, uh, we're probably gonna talk about it some more next week, and a week after that, and a week after that, until the legislature. Unless AOC it. steps up and does something radical. And well, changes she, everything. She's gonna do something radical. She's gonna do something I don't know radical. If she's gonna change anything. So until until next week, until our next episode, I am Jerry Kane. I'm Detective Michelle I'm, Durante. That's right, Durante. Durante. Don't you forget it. Durante. Like Jimmy. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>